if you're like me and a fan of looter shooters as well as the survival horror genre, then Once Human is going to be the perfect game for you. It's going to be free to play as of July 9th and is already poised to be one of the hotter games of 2024. Today I'm going to be talking about why you should be playing this new survival looter shooter and why it's going to essentially just be the main game that I'm going to be playing for the foreseeable future. It has loot, it has great enemy design, it has great abilities, and the world itself is actually quite interesting and something that I'm willing to just really, you know, dig some time into for the foreseeable future. Now, I will let you know I did have early access to this game, so big thanks to Starry Studios for doing that. Uh, but this is going to be honestly just kind of like my own reasonings why I think you should be playing this game as well. Now, before we get into everything, know you can follow me over on YouTube and Twitter at Birdman778. Give a thumbs up on the video. Let me know some once human content that you're interested in seeing down below. Subscribe and become a member. Now, let's jump right on in onto why you should be playing once human. Now, the biggest reason and probably the easiest one to, you know, kind of pitch to people is the fact that it is a free to play game. Yeah, there's no, you know, entry fee to play. You can just kind of hop in and do essentially all the content from the get go. The only thing that really costs anything is just, you know, cosmetics and stuff like that for your weapons or your character. So, again, is this like your typical, you know, 2024 game with just like simple microtransactions for just cosmetics? Nothing that is truly pay to win. The world itself is also very interesting. You get kind of dropped in. I mean, literally dropped into the map uh, from the beginning of the game. You essentially are just kind of told where to kind of like start off at. And you're just going to start kind of building this like small little base for yourself while you traverse out into the open world, gathering supplies and defeating other enemies. A lot of those enemies are going to be just kind of like basic mobs, like, you know, like zombie like creatures, small, like little spidery looking guys. But then they're going to start kind of evolving a little bit into these almost like Lovecraft uh, combinations of Cthulhu like dudes with giant arms, guys that have uh, drill heads on them, giant creatures that you have to like shoot the different sacks on them to make them be stunned. They are actually very interesting. And again, the design of the enemies throughout the game are really spot on. And even like the main world bosses that you're going to fight are actually really interesting and do require mechanics to actually fight them. And they're not just going to be giant sponges on themselves. You're going to have to do things in between to actually complete the fight, which I really do enjoy. Again, typically a lot of these like freemium games are just going to be putting in like the lowest amount of effort into a lot of like the overall boss designs and stuff like that versus this where it's like, hey, we want to challenge you along the way and also like make it very rewarding by the end. Now, this is going to be, again, a looter shooter. So there's going to be loot for you to find throughout the world. There's going to be things for you to farm from certain bosses so that you're able to progress and, you know, complete different builds that you want to create. But one of the biggest things is finding the different deviants throughout the world. Now, these deviants are going to be essentially like your pals. They're going to be the things that are going to kind of like help you progress through the game like a little bit better, make certain things easier for you, whether it's at like in combat or at your camp or create certain things for you to be able to use while you're out in the main world. There's going to be utility deviants. They're going to essentially just give you uh, different consumables that you're going to use the crafting station to then create these small little vials that are going to give you boosts while you're out in the world, whether it's, you know, extra backpack space, giving you like spring legs, stuff like that. That's just going to kind of like add to the overall build crafting of the game in a weird, interesting way. Others are going to be combat focused so that while we are out in the world, you can use them to fight all these other you know, creatures that you're seeing, ones that are just going to help give defense and give you health, other ones that are going to actually shoot a weapon with you, ones that are going to add extra damage to targets, stuff like that, where again, it's just like adding into like, how do you want to play the game and making it a little bit more interesting. And the final will be like the territory deviants. Now these are going to help you do different things at your actual base, whether it's, you know, the giant dinosaur that's going to help you with your cooking, making it more efficient, it's going to be able to do a lot of that stuff for you. You have the little bumblebee that's going to help you with your crops. You're going to have a little Digby boy who's going to go out into the world and collect different minerals and things for you that you need for crafting. Again, just all around, not really, I haven't really seen anything like this in other games where, you know, you have these little creatures that are helping out. Again, it reminds me somewhat of like Power World in a way, but at the same time, uh, this different like survival looter shooter spin on it. Now, I've actually played all of the different betas, and it's been actually really interesting to see how the combat has evolved 
throughout this. It used to be in a way where you would have like a certain weapon and you would have to activate this like energy bar that you have to get the effect on the weapon. And the devs realized, hey, this isn't really conducive to like really good combat or anything like that. Let's just let these weapons be unique on their own and have these awesome abilities. And now the final product, you are able to just use all these absolutely crazy weapons that are going to have some really solid effects, uh, whether it's going to be extra bounce between targets, you're going to have like lightning strikes come down whenever you shoot a certain amount of bullets at a target, uh, be able to catch enemies on fire. A lot of different interesting things that is really feeding into that uh, looter shooter aspect that I usually think of from games like Destiny or Borderlands. Now, if you are a more of a survival gamer, uh, you enjoy that survival aspect of the game. This is definitely something for you. I will say, though, I don't think this is something that is as aggressive as a lot of survival games that I've played in the past, where there's a lot of like uh, weapons that are just like constantly breaking down your base is breaking down. You have to be logging on every single day to play to make sure that, you know, all your hard work isn't going to waste. Uh, it is, the game is very forgiving of that. You really aren't ever going to lose a whole lot of your like your loot when you go out into the world and you die and stuff like that. Um, the, the devs are definitely conscious of the fact that, hey, we want people to have like a fun time uh, being able to enjoy all this great loot and all the different materials that you're going to get throughout the world. We don't want to punish you too hard for, you know, some mistake that happens along the way. Now, before this game came out, when it was in the main beta, there was actually a vending machine that you eventually uh, are going to unlock, the Wish Machine. And a lot of people had some speculation that this was going to be somewhat of a, like, a gotcha machine, like, pay to win, essentially, for any of the weapons or gear that you are wanting, and that is completely untrue. Uh, the way you're actually able to use the Wish Machine is by getting materials throughout the world from doing just, like, the actual seasonal activities, uh, going through your journey, or or even just farming for the material itself, Starkrum, uh, on its own. It is not going to be a pay-to-win thing. So, again, any speculation that you heard before the game came out is completely untrue. The only microtransactions that are in the game are going to be cosmetic-based and not going to be remotely pay-to-win. And it's going to be kind of pseudo live service. It is having a battle pass. It does have a seasonal model where you're going to be doing different quests. You're going to be going out in the world, fighting new bosses, uh, stuff like that, getting new gear. I'm really excited for this just for the fact, again, uh, big fan of games like Destiny and Borderlands. Borderlands was like a pseudo live service while Destiny is a full blown live service game. So kind of having something where it's like, hey, we want you to come back. We want you to play some more. We want you to be able to, you know, constantly be able to craft new things. We want you to be able to fight new bosses and just kind of feel that power fantasy uh, I really do enjoy it's also again pretty much completely your choice whether you want to do PvE or PvP there will be entirely dedicated PvP servers there's going to be dedicated PvE servers there is going to be certain sections where it is going to be PvP based in the main open world uh, but again those are completely opt-in you do not like it's not like you're just going to get like jump scared by a bunch of people just showing up and then just like shooting you down uh, and even if like you do opt into those PvP sections you are able to, you know, not have to worry about any of your gear getting taken, anything like that. Uh, again, you die, and that's just pretty much it right then and there. You aren't going to be punished for losing out on a fight. But that's going to be it for me, guys. Again, let me know some of your interest in seeing from Once Human down below. And know that I, this is going to be essentially my main grind for the foreseeable future. I'm just really excited for the fact that I have something that's kind of, again... Uh, a mash of two genres I really love, like the survival horror and also the looter shooter aspect. I'll be able to create different builds and setups for you guys as well to just make the entire open world a little bit easier. Uh, so hopefully we're able to just really kind of like dive into that here in the future. But make sure you're playing Once Human starting on July 9th. Again, it is free to play. And make sure you're giving a thumbs up on this video to help us out in the algorithm. Comment something down below. And follow me over on YouTube and Twitter at Birdman778. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you have a great night, day, whatever it may be.